get into it. How, how do you incorporate play in your session planning, mate? Take take us through it. Um, mate, I got to first of all, I got to give a little bit of a backstory, and and I promised I would give him a shout out. So this is a shout out to Paul Sartori because he told me he'd be watching this instead of the Commonwealth Games. So he wow. Promised, um, <laughs> Uh, it's, we're kind of we, we've been in this we're in the early stages of the school investing quite strongly into S and C. Like Dave mentioned, that their school they've put a lot of time and effort into it, and they've done that here. So um, Paul has been heading up the program. Um, we built this from scratch from the last like four and a half years with alongside with some amazing coaches. And as part of our early discussions, we both believe that that play is such an important part to learning and we wanted a program that is structured, but also fun and engaging. And I think that was the, that was the big issue that we saw was, and, and I wish Nathan was here because he was kind of talking something about this, about like earning the right and giving kids freedom and that sort of thing. So we were looking at how can we provide structure while also keeping it engaging and fun and bringing the energy to these sessions and keep the kids coming back. So what, what are your favorite games? What top five, mate, that, that you think get the best effect? Uh, yeah. Um, oh, there are so many games, and I'm I'm gonna shout out. I'll do a few, but shout out to Athletes Authority. If anyone is on the social media game, you must have seen the cone reaction game about a hundred times, and it must be the the most well used game. And I'm sure we've all done it in the SNC industry, especially in the high school setting. Well, in any setting, really. Um, just an easy and fun way to do it and then you can manipulate the game as you need and as they do with adding tennis balls in adding some jumping variations to it and that kind of thing a um, couple others we like to use is any sort of reaction game so i won't go too much into the details but for anyone out there holding different tennis balls and then someone having the hands either behind the back or in different positions catching the ball and then you can add variety to that as much as possible um and same with another one we do like a noughts and crosses tic-tac toe tic-tac toe our version is using uh cones and the spiky massage balls that we that we have around which tend to work well how do you add some engagement when they are coming in a bit flat um i imagine if a coach has never done that before and they get them doing the tennis balls potentially it can go the other way where it, it doesn't quite get the engagement so what are some some tips and tricks that you give to, to make sure that the the players do spark up and bring some energy to to a game like that i think first first of all you have to bring your own energy um i always like to think you have to be you have to be the energy in the room sometimes not all the times but sometimes you have to be the energy but adding a adding a competitive element to is is probably the easiest way to get uh any of these kids fired up especially the athletes so adding that sort of stuff into it um and then you could, like I said, you can vary up the games as much as possible to make it like a challenge so that um, if you're dropping the ball from a certain distance and you have to back up a little bit and you're catching it before the second bounce. So you're imagining it's almost like a tennis player playing a drop shot, like reaching in to, to grab something, that kind of thing. So you're just training another element there. Once the game's done and you're starting and you've got the energy and the vibes up, um, what are some of your key focuses when they're now getting to work? Oh, you mean after the games or? Yeah, yeah. after the games. Oh, the, the same the same as like what they are in the games, which is to have fun, to, to explore, to compete, to make mistakes, which you're doing, you're doing this all in the game and you're setting up that mentality when they go do other things. Like, yes, we want to get the movements like down. We want to get technique correct, but it's okay to make mistakes. And it's the same is going to happen in these games, right? You want to, and, and, and in such an environment like a school where often these kids are quite scared to make mistakes, especially if you're in quite a strong academic school where one mistake can make such a big difference in your score at the end of the year. Mm. These kids are worried about making mistakes or taking risks. And in a safe environment where you're playing games and you're allowing them to do that in their warm ups, then they feel confident and they can, you know, I mean, do things by themselves a little bit more and they don't have to be constantly looked after by a coach. And that, so that's something that we can pass on through the games then into the sessions. Point, did you guys come up with, with this thinking and, and, and started implementing this? How did it come about? I think this was just our, our general conversations. These are the, the things you have to do when you're starting, when, when you're really starting a program from, the, from, the, from scratch really is, 
have these conversations about what you're looking like, what, what you want the program to look like moving forward, what the vision of the program was and, and our vision of the program was to, we want a space where kids want to come. They want to, they feel safe. They feel like they can make mistakes. They can explore. We give them that freedom of choice like Nathan talked about. We allow them to be creative and these were all things we wanted. And if we were going to do that, then we want to provide stuff like that in our warm ups and through our sessions as well as providing solid strength and conditioning training for the boys as well.